Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the very uh, basic lesson about the introduction to the Burp Suite. I know this is a very popular tool and very essential tool for all the pen testers, so I thought this would be a refreshing episode for everyone who knows this tool. We'll, we'll touch base like you know, on the major features such as proxy, sequencer, decoder, repeater. Uh, we'll talk through some of the use cases. And then uh, uh, this will also be a good session for someone like a beginner who wants to get in the application security and, and uh, Burp is, I think, the essential tool. E even if you are using WhatsApp, it's a bit similar. So uh, if you know Burp Suite, you can easily transition between the tools. So uh, the first, uh, first of all, I want to uh, show you guys how, how you can where you can download and install the Burp Suite from. So. Uh, the easiest way to download and, and install is from the their Port Speaker website. So when you go to the, so probably the the page where you can uh, download the uh, Burp Suite is uh, this one. Uh, this is the community download page, but of course uh, you can also download the pro version from this page as well if you have a license key for that. Uh, here you can select what edition you want to download and, and what operating system you are running. You can also simply download the chart and, and you can deploy on doesn't matter which operating system that is. And once you download, make sure you do uh, verify the checksum uh, because that's essential. And, and I'm not just saying because uh, it's a bulk suite tool, but for any tools and being a security professional, you want to make sure you're, you're not being fished or you're not been given like you know any any vulnerable software so you always verify the integrity wherever uh, wherever that's available for you to verify so once you download this tool um, it's it's going to be pretty straightforward you just download and if it's an exe just double click and install if it's a jar file again once you have the environment path variable set you can double click on the jar file and, and you can run the bug suite you can also run it from the command line so there are several ways to do it and they have a uh, good articles uh, around how to install and run it so i'm not gonna go into much detail but this is very high level on how you should download. Now, I already have Burp running, so I'm going to switch to that. And the first thing uh, I want to show you is the proxy. So, of course, with the recent updates, uh, uh, the major part have been changed is uh, they have the in inbuilt browser, which is Chromium. Uh, in the previous video, I, I think we saw that how browser-based scanning is helping enormously to the Burp suite. So, uh, of course, I'm just going to use the, uh, this browser. You can also, uh, in, uh, like, you know, configure your own browser like Firefox, Safari, or Chrome if you have to. I've been using um, uh, the add-on, uh, which is this one, uh, Foxy Proxy. Uh, this allows me to easily turn on and off the browser rather than uh, going through the proxy but if you prefer the other way so what you need to do is you just go in here go to the options uh, go to the security uh, let me see no so go to the network setting go to the proxy and, and like you know you can specify manual proxy configuration if it's a local host you just say 127.0.0.1 you specify the port you use this proxy for all. If you want to avoid proxy for anything, uh, you put it here. Otherwise, you can just ignore and, and hit OK, and that's done. Or you can use the Foxy proxy, which I prefer. So that's a couple of ways you can uh, configure the proxy. Now, uh, in this one, if you're using the one which is key one, the open browser one, or, or the inbuilt browser one, you just hit on the open browser. And what it's going to do is it's going to open the browser and you would start uh, seeing uh, the request uh, intercepted by default. Like you don't have to change anything. You don't need to uh, go to the settings or system settings or manage any, anything. You just uh, open the browser and start uh, browsing. So for example, if I hit this website here, as you can see, uh, the GET request has been fired up right away. and once I forward and turn the intercept off uh, and not to intercept any of the requests, we saw the uh, website loading, right? So this is the uh, feature uh, that they have uh, introduced, which is very essential. You don't need to configure proxy every time in, with your browser. But I've seen sometimes, uh, why do I, so okay, so why do I use Firefox or my own browser rather than use the Chromium one? Uh, because sometimes some uh, browser-based uh, mitigation or controls. So, for example, Chrome has 
some level of uh, controls or, or protection against the XSS attacks or injection attacks. Um, uh, same thing goes for the Chrome, uh, Firefox, and Safari, so and the Chromium. So, depending on how, what attack I'm trying and and based on how, what protection does the browser offer, I I try to navigate uh, like you know use my browser sometimes. Uh, more or less, all the browsers are same, but uh, Sometimes it might be possible, like, you know, for example, you're not able to execute your cross-site scripting in the Chrome, but you can easily do that with the Firefox or Chromium. So uh, depending on, like, you know, what version of the browser you're using and, and what updates do they have, uh, you have to use your own browser. But most of the time you can use the Chromium, and, and uh, if you had to, you can switch the browser. Uh, so that's a that's a proxy feature. Uh, the other thing uh, here in the HTTP history, you can see all the history of the uh, request being made. Uh, WebSocket is also uh, pretty important because um, many websites nowadays using the WebSocket, and you can do you can as a pen tester you can try like WebSocket web hijacking and DDoS sort of attacks for the WebSocket. So you can uh, manage and see all the history here. Now this is the main, uh, I, I guess the most critical portion of the bar suite where you want to uh, make sure you have all the configuration right. Uh, you can add multiple proxy listeners. You can define which request response you want to intercept. You can also define whether you want to intercept the WebSocket messages or not. Uh, response modification, match and replace, and this is the miscellaneous. So if something is out of scope, you don't want to log into the proxy history, you can make it clear here. And the scope you can define here. So based on the scope, uh, Burf will decide whether I need to keep the history. Because over the time, if you are like you know tracking a long project or, or you're using the same uh, Burf session for the same application over and over again, uh, the file size becomes uh, gross, right? So. You want, if you want to avoid un, unwanted request in the history, you can just check this option, and that will uh, do the job. Uh, so that's about the proxy. Now uh, let's talk about the intruder. So intruder is like a, a brute forcing attack, or uh, you want to try and test like you know um, a different payloads on the same request. So you can do that. So for example, uh, let's say. Uh, I'm going to intercept a request here. Uh, let's click in sign in. And what I want to do is uh, I have admin and I have put some random password here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this request to intruder. There is also a shortcut, but you can also right click and send it somewhere. Uh, so once I send it, I go here and position. Now here you have multiple options, right? You can use sniper. You mean like uh, you have one attack, like one space where you can put your payload. You can you have this one, pitchfork, bomb. They all have multiple uh, ways you can bombard the application. So let's just use the simple one, right? So I'm gonna clear everything, and for the password, I'm gonna add like this is the field I want to change while the attack. Now I need to specify the payloads because there is only one payload. There is only one place I want to attack. So I, there's a one like you know payload set is one. There's a simple list. I can now put the list in here. So let's say one is password. Add then this random number admin. All right, so let's say likewise you can also add from the existing list. Uh, so that's also a possibility. But let's say we have this list, and when we want to start the attack, you just go here, intruder, and start attack. Now, as you can see, uh, here all of the requests fired up, and you could see the length uh, of the response and uh, what was the response for each of those. Now, as you could observe, so for example, you want to brute force the login uh, page, right? That's what we did actually in this uh, scenario. And you could see the length of the response is same for the this two requests, while this has the more uh, content length. What does that mean? That means uh, it's possible that uh, we got like you know a better response, or maybe we got the post login page because this length is different. So. Uh, this is like you know just the three requests, but 
if you count like okay let's say uh we want to do like a eight letter words which is like 59481 request and when you start tag with this you could possibly see this would like you know keep on going 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 and yeah it's it's like here you can see how much progress it is making and let me actually stop the attack here uh, oops uh let's go here attack pause so here you can easily short things so once you click on this one you can see uh, the length and only the length uh different number that we got is for this request that means this is the correct password for the for this application and this is how you brute force so it's it's doing the brute force uh, there is also good like you know to check whether uh, all sort of login uh, page attacks right whether it, you can bypass the captcha uh, whether the application is blocking the user after so many attempts so all those things you can easily try with the intruder uh let's see what else uh so the repeater uh, repeater is again uh, one of my favorite tool during the pen test because you do not want to so for example if i'm trying to see uh, observe the j session id or if i'm trying to uh, observe the application response on the different payloads i don't need to go to the browser every time and, and check out i would rather send it to repeater and like you know make my modification so here i'll send this request I'll modify let's say I'm trying to bypass some uh, uh filters for the XSS and I try to see okay if I put this what the application responds if I do this how does it respond uh, if I HTML, I put payload as an HTML encoding how does it respond so rather than like like getting a request from the browser every time I would just rather send it to the repeater and uh, replay the request that's why it's very very essential uh that you make use of the repeater uh tool uh the next one up is sequencer i think we recently got like a full fledged uh, demo on the sequencer but so what sequencer is uh it's pretty straightforward i'm just i'm not going to do a full demo but uh straightforward it's going to help you analyze the session token uh, or any sort of token randomness uh so be it a password reset token uh be it captcha uh be it a session token uh, like a dot net session id or j session id you want to check the randomness or entropy of the of the session and that's again like part of the pen test pen testing right because session management attacks you want to verify all of these things so you can easily uh, uh use this uh, particular feature for that so if i had to do a quick quick demo uh so let's see so here's so a select a request where you do not have a session token in the request but in the response so as you can see here uh this one has a, a session token in the response but not in the request so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send it to sequencer and the sequencer you define whether you want to uh check the randomness of the cookie or the custom location if you do the custom location you highlight that but yeah in this case we just want to do this for j session id uh you can um modify the options here you can also put the manual load analysis options i'm not going to do much about this uh, sorry i'm just going to start the live capture here so it's going to actually send the request um as you can see the number of counts here and it's going to gather all the tokens and then at the last it's going to analyze the token now for good results you want to capture at least 500 to 1000 tokens so burp is able to make like you know uh Uh, has a good set of samples before make any decision so i'm just going to do like auto analyze for the next 100 requests so now it's going to analyze for every 100 request and uh, here are the different options you can see in terms of what details uh, for each uh, uh for each analysis you can see so let's stop this one and here you can go through the results and and determine okay this was the sample size used this was the taken token length reliability is poor because we only had 100 samples to select from however based on the samples the randomness of the token was excellent so this way you can use multiple uh like you know ways uh, to use a sequencer I'm sure like doing the pen testing you have to use each of this tool at least once and that's what I've seen. Now if we look at the decoder uh, which is a straightforward tool you can also find so many online tools but 
when you when you ha- when you get that into purpose why do you go to the any tool and and like you know uh, you may end up on the bad website so here they have multiple options you can you can put a string here and then you can decode as a url html base64 now this would be useful in a two way one when you are getting let's say json web token and you want to decode and see the content of it you can of course json web token is base64 encoded so you can decode and you can see all the details here right uh, I don't I don't have uh, valid JSON JWT, so I'm not going to do that. But here you, it will give you a plain text of what the de- decoded base64 looks like. Now the other uh, way I u- also use it is uh, when I'm trying to uh, bypass any uh, XSS uh, filters so or injection attacks. So let's say if I want to insert this payload and application is blocking it, I may want to encode it in the HTML or the URL, and then I pass this, I copy this, and I pass that payload into the repeater and see if the application still blocks my request or am I able to bypass it. So that's also uh, a good use of the uh, decoder. Uh, You also have uh, different hashing techniques that you can use. Uh, We saw that uh, I I ask you that you always verify the checksum of the uh, installer, so that's what it is like it it generates the hash and then uh, you generate the hash again after you download the software you compare the checksum and if it's the same thing then yeah you can go ahead and install the software so that's what it is uh comparer as the name suggests you can have two requests i haven't used a lot of this feature uh, so like you know you might want to use it when you have the uh two request uh sorry two response and you want to see what the difference in the response is so you can compare and see the details uh, that's what i have been using it extender uh, of course if you have to download and install any integrations you can use that uh extension here they uh, they also have an app store here uh, which you can use and install uh tools some of these tools are are pretty awesome um, like you know it would it will really help you on, uh, uh, like, you know, rather than doing the manual patent test. So, for example, uh, access validator, right? This has sends the response to local running database server. And rather than, uh, like, creating your own server, you can easily do that. Uh, this seems like you can bypass the WAF. Here you have the Vistal uh, for the SOAP security, SOAP uh, web services security. So that there are multiple uh, uh extension here which you can use there are also apis you can make a use of and and create your own and here are all the uh, environments that you might have to configure so this is uh, this is i guess uh, the high level uh, overview that i wanted to give in terms of uh, what the each tool is and and how do you use it uh, let me know uh, if this is uh, if there is any any other feature you want me to dip down into, I know we have covered in the past like a bulb scanner, how to scan, active scan, passive scan. We have looked at some of this feature very deep down uh, in the long session, but I didn't want to bore you guys with the demo on each of this one and, and make this like a one-hour video. So I just highlighted some of the key pieces and when to use it. But if you are interested in any of those learning in the deep down, let me know and, and I can make a separate video for that. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, put it in the comment section. Uh, follow me on the Facebook and subscribe to my channel. And, and hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. All right. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.